I have another low carb ketogenic meal I want to share with you today. Today it is the Camp Classic Chili. If you're interested, keep watching. So, you know, there are as many different recipes for making chili while you're out in the woods as there are people who make chili. I think everybody has their own personal favorite way of doing it. And that's the great thing about chili is it's so customizable. The one challenge with having chili when you're on a low carb or ketogenic diet is usually the primary ingredients. Well, the primary ingredients often start with meat, obviously, and tomatoes, which is fine, but then it's beans on top of that, and then you add other ingredients. The problem with beans is not that they're not healthy and nutritious and delicious at that, it's just that they are high in carbohydrates. So when you're trying to convert a meal like chili over to a low carb version, you have to look for some alternatives. Well, I have found a couple of alternatives that work perfectly in this meal. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you down to my little tabletop where I'll put all the ingredients together and then I'll get it over a fire so we can cook it up and then of course we'll do a taste test. Okay, what I'll do is I'll show you each of the ingredients and go over the recipe that I'm going to use for this chili meal and we'll just talk about some alternatives as we go along and then of course I'll get a fire started and we'll get it on. So right off of the top there's a few things you need which are I think pretty Pretty much every chili recipe has them and one is ground meat or some type of a meat source so I am going to be using a half a pound of ground beef this is medium ground beef that I have here and that's the first thing I'll have to cook up of course and brown it before I can ask, add the rest of the ingredients but after that I have tomatoes and these are crushed or diced tomatoes and this is a half of a 28 fluid ounce can so half the can I have 14 ounces here and as you'll see this is still going to make quite a big meal there's actually a quite a few things that go into this now here are the two things that I'm adding that will actually make this very much like a traditional chili meal but will be very much on the low carb and I'll talk about these ingredients specifically in a moment so this is black soya beans, not black beans, but black soya beans. Half of a 14 ounce can, so I have seven ounces of black soya beans here. I'll show you what they look like in a moment. The other thing that I'll be adding to it uh, to make it a low carb meal is lupini flakes. So this is, uh, is the dried flakes of lupini beans, and they are also a low carb, high protein uh, bean. That's a great alternative to a lot of things. This gives it some color, kind of reminds me of corn in some of the chili recipes. Then after that, it's a matter of choice. Uh, I have onions diced up, half of a small onion and two whole cloves of garlic diced up in here. I do like my garlic. And I have some green peppers. I didn't have any red peppers, so I did bring some green peppers. But these, are, of course, are optional. A lot of people uh, like to leave those things out or add something different. You can have, if I had habaneros or chilies or uh, jalapeno uh, peppers or any of the peppers like that, I would have added them. Your, your chili, you can do what you want. This is just meant to be a very base recipe, something that you can build on. But no chili recipe is complete without its spices. And when you call it chili recipe, it has to have, at least in my mind, it has to have chili spices. So in this little container, I have about a tablespoon of crushed chilies, dried chilies, and a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half of chipotle. Those are my two favorites, but there is some salt and pepper in, in here as well. Okay, now uh, let's just talk about the black beans and the, uh, or the uh, lupini beans. So let me just give you a, a look at what these black beans look like. Really, they just, they look identical to uh, black, these are black soya beans, right? I have to correct myself here. These are black soya beans, not black beans. And uh, because they look identical and you, and the cans often sit side by side on the shelves in the store. Now I picked these up at a local grocery store here in the health food section because they're not really common for purchase, but in the health food section of the grocery store, black soya beans. And uh, now the thing about black soya beans is this. One cup, now I have half a can, but we'll just base it on one cup. A one cup of black soybeans has 240 calories, 22 grams of protein, 12 grams of fat, and 16 grams of carbs. But 14 of those 16 grams are fiber. 
So this is very low on the carb count. The impact that this has on the carbohydrate in this entire meal is minimal. And it really, it does a good job of increasing the amount of fiber that's in there. And the flavor is spot on. I think you'll, you'll like it if you get to try it. All right, those are the black beans. And these are the chili flakes. Now they are dried flakes, as you can see, uh, or not chili flakes, <laughs> lupini beans. <laughs> get my ingredients mixed up. Lupini beans. One cup of lupini beans has 198 calories, a little bit less than the soybeans, 26 grams of protein. So these are a high protein uh, item. Five grams of fat, 16 grams of carbs, but, and five of those are fiber. So once again, it's low in carbs and even lower when you subtract the fiber to get the neck, the neck carbohydrate count. Um, there's one thing I should mention about lupini beans. They are related to peanuts and they grow underground. These are not a bean uh, like you would get in bean pods on top of a vining plant. These grow from the lupin plant and the beans are underground and they look like a kidney bean. It's probably the best way to describe what they look like. I'm able to buy them dried and sliced like this, and I've used lupini flour quite often, and it's a great alternative to some of the other flours that we have in a low-carb diet. These are dry, but they will soak up the uh, liquids in this very quickly and become very soft. Okay, first step, let's get a fire going and brown our beef. All right, so my fire is well established. I can get underway with browning the beef. And just before I do, let me just mention that the stove that I am using today is the Fire Maple Maverick three-sided stove. Uh, I've reviewed this separately, and I thought it was a good match for this pot, which is the Fire Maple 1.2 liter pot that I just reviewed, not, well, actually earlier today. And as you can see, shiny, brand new. It's been over propane, but it has not been over uh, fire yet. Well, that's about to change right now. So the fire is a little bit high, but it's starting to die down. And, uh, uh, you know, it's not something I'll simmer the rest of the ingredients over, but I think it'll work for browning as long as I keep the beef moving. I am going to put a little bit of olive oil in. It just helps to keep things from sticking. And I'm also going to be putting in my onions and garlic at the same time as well to brown them up and you can see it is quite hot in there so let me move those around. This is in fact a little hotter than you want it to be but it is dying back quickly my fire so I'm kind of counting on that I may have to lift the pot off otherwise. There is my one half pound of ground beef and that went in. Now I'm going to start breaking this up yeah it is a little hot. Start breaking this up so that it browns and breaks down. There's everything inside, just a quick look. It's going to take a few minutes to make this all down or browned and cooked through. So what I'll do is I'll work on this for the next couple of minutes and then I'll bring it back when it's time to put the rest of the ingredients in. There's no pink left in the beef. The onions and the garlic are starting to get soft. Just what you want. Quite a bit of oil or fat released from the beef itself. So some recipes call for draining the fat off and uh, you know I prefer to leave the fat in one because it goes well with a ketogenic diet and two I think there's a lot of flavor you pour off with that. So all right so next ingredient let's go with the big ones the tomatoes. So the tomatoes go in now once again this is 14 ounces or half of a can of tomatoes. Take that out for a moment. In go the tomatoes. Now, cooking over a fire. From here on in, it's all about simmering at a relatively low heat, just enough to keep a little bit of bubbles taking place. So I've allowed the fire, you can see, to die down. I just put two more sticks in, but I'm gonna to have to be careful not to burn everything. Keep it bubbling, but don't let it stick. The trick with cooking over a fire, as I've mentioned many times, and I'm sure you know, is not to cook over a lot of flame. Try to cook over hot coals or low flame. So if you are cooking over flames, you're going to have to either raise the pot off if it gets too hot, or in addition, keep things moving. So you can see lots of liquids in there. Next ingredient, this is one of the two secret ingredients, or the things that make it low carb, and this is the half cup of lupini flakes that go in. I want those in early because they are dry, but they're going to soften up quite readily along with all the wet ingredients. They'll soak up some of the moisture so it's not too wet by the time 
you know, everything's ready to eat, so they mix through. And the other ingredient, key secret, and I don't call it secret, the key ingredient that makes this a low-carb meal are the black soya beans. And honestly, to look at them, to taste them, you wouldn't know the difference between these beans and just regular black beans. They're virtually identical, but boy, the nutrition is so much different. These being high protein, low carb beans. And you can see there's quite a bit of liquid, but that will all soak into those lapini flakes. All right, so what's left here? Oh, where'd they go? Here they are, my green peppers. Optional, of course, but you know, they do add something to the meal. And they will soften up. Could have added them in the beginning with the garlic and the onions. I left it to leave them. Gives a little bit of color with the reds, the browns, the yellows, the green. But no chili is complete without its spices. And this is usually where people differ on what goes in. As I mentioned, this is chili peppers, chipotle, salt and pepper. After that, you add what it is you want to add. Uh, in fact, what I like to do is I like to go a little bit conservative to start with, although I've kind of dialed it in so that I know what I'm adding and how much I like, but because you can always add a little bit more at the end. I do have my spice kit with some hot oils and hot spices in it that I can add to this. And I have one other thing that when I go to serve, I'll be adding on top of it. But when we get to that point, that's when I'll bring you back because all there is now is just to keep it moving. I'm going to put the cover on if my flame is low enough. There, see what I've got now? Very little flame left. I'll put the cover on. I'll just keep an eye on it. Make sure it's not sticking to the bottom of the pot. Probably 10, 15 minutes. The longer you leave it, the better it is. The more the flavors move about, the more softer everything gets. Oh yeah, the better. But as soon as Everything is softened up, and I think those green peppers are one of my guidelines. If they're softer, then everything else probably is all combined. But as I say, if you can put this on and leave it on for an even longer period of time, the more the flavors will move around in the pot. All right, so once again, when I think it's ready for the taste test, that's when I'll bring it back. All right, I'm going to estimate it was probably 20 minutes since I put this on the fire. Just to give you an idea. You can see just a low little fire going down there, not a lot of active flame. And how does it look inside? Oh yes, look at that. Bubbling nicely, nothing stuck to the bottom. All the other ingredients inside are nice and soft, well combined. And as I said, if you left it a little longer, the flavors would even combine a bit better, but uh, I think this is ready. So what I'm gonna do now is transfer it to a bowl and uh, we'll set up for the taste test. All right, so my chili is ready, steaming hot. I have a little bit less than half of the pot in here, but uh, before I do anything else, why don't I give you a close up of it so you can see what it looks like. Hopefully that's showing up there. So you can clearly see the uh, ground beef, green peppers, tomatoes, lupini flakes, and the black or black soya beans, I keep saying that, black soya beans all inside of there. All right, one more adjustment of the camera. Okay, it's ready. Well, not quite. One more ingredient that I like to add to mine, you may or may not, cheddar cheese. So I have some grated cheddar cheese, a little less than half a cup here. It adds flavor, but more importantly, it all, well, not more importantly, just as importantly, it also, adds fat to the meal, which is important on a low carb ketogenic diet. And that as that sits on top of the chili, it will melt in. I can't wait, let's do a taste test. Yes, I do. I do have the spices dialed in. There is just enough heat in this, along with uh, the other spices that are in there, the salt and pepper, that I can feel the heat, but it's not overriding the flavor of each of the ingredients inside. And I think that's important, at least for me. Some people like it the hotter the better. If there's no steam coming out of their ears, no water running down their cheeks, then they haven't made it hot enough. Now, I, I can eat chili like that, but 
I prefer chili. Actually, my nose is starting to run, so there's some heat there. I prefer chili where I can still taste all the ingredients that are inside. So, uh, let's just talk about this for a minute. Now, as I mentioned when I opened up, there is many recipes for camp chili, camp chili, trail chili, whatever else you want to come call it, as there are people who make this. This is a very basic, simple one. If I was doing a more complex one, I would add more things to it. But the key ingredients that make this something I can now have and enjoy are the black soya beans and the lupini flakes. They are what make it as close to a traditional chili as anything I have found. Now, if you're not on a, a low-carb diet, then add whatever you want. But if you are on a low-carb diet and you're looking to have a good amount of protein, a good amount of fat, and lots of fiber, then those two key ingredients will make this something you just have to try. Now, the other thing I'll say is how much. So what I had there is half of what I normally would make at home. And when I make a full, from a full can of tomatoes, full can of beans and whatever, a full pound of beef, then that usually makes four meals for me, three to four meals, depending on how hungry I am, usually divided up into sections of four. If I'm especially hungry and I wanna stretch it and go a little further, then I'll put a base under it. And what I mean by that is before I was on a, a low carb diet, I would add rice. I'd cook some rice, put that on the plate, put the chili on top. And that extends the meal and gives you some more bulk to it. Well, the rice is not on the low carb diet either, but there are some alternatives like cauliflower rice. It works pretty good actually. Uh, also konjac rice, or uh, there's another term for it, but those are something you have to buy as opposed to make yourself. So they work, but honestly, this doesn't need it. Oh, the cheese is melting. Can you see that? Look at that. That is just <laughs> amazing. So, and the other thing I would do to extend a little bit further is put in more cheese than I did here. Now, I'm using ground beef, but you can use any meat you want. Ground pork, ground chicken, ground veal. I've added bacon in the past. I've added uh, sausages, chorizo sausage. Any sausage you want, anything you want, really can go into a chili. As again, there's as many recipes uh, for chili as there are people who cook it. Look at that. Mm. I don't know. Is this better because I cooked it over the fire? This is one of the nicest tasting uh, makeup of this that I have done in a long time. And I, I make this often enough at home. I've just not made it out in the woods before, but I thought it was easy enough to do. Why not come out and show you how to do it? Okay, if you have any alternatives to the two ingredients that I said made up, made this or turned this into a low carb a meal, alternatives to black soya beans or the lapini beans, then uh, I'd be interested in hearing what it is you have. If you have any thoughts, if you try this, I'd be interested in knowing what your thoughts are. Yeah, I'll put all the information. I'll put the full recipe for what went into today's meal. Or actually, I'll put the full recipe of what I normally would make, the full can and that type of thing. And again, this is half of that recipe. I'll put that all in the video description below. And uh, as well as the nutritional breakdown for this meal and the special, especially for the two ingredients. Again, the lapini beans and the black soya beans. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.